Hey guys, this is going to be a response to Rational Roundtable's video responding to Prof. MTH's video about the biblical story of Adam and Eve and how it affects Christianity if you do not take it literally. Now, I'm going to link the video down in the crotch bar and I recommend all my subscribers to watch it. I think it's brilliant. I have been looking for a while for somebody to give me an explanation behind the symbolism of the story of uh, the stories in Genesis. I've made about three videos about it, if not more, requesting people, mostly the puppy turtle, to explain to me how, if you do not take it literally, how do you explain the symbolism? Because just saying it's symbolic doesn't really answer anything and sounds rather like an excuse. But the Rational Roundtable did a pretty good job in explaining the symbolism behind it. And again, if you do not watch his video, you will not understand what my questions are about and where they come from. So, all of you watch it, stop this video right now, watch it, and then continue. Anyway, my questions are going to be as follows. If Adam and Eve were not literally created on a, a specific day and put here on Earth the way they are, but rather evolved, and were the first Homo sapiens to gain a conscience. Um, and the apple, or the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, is just a symbol to gaining a conscience and knowledge of what's right and wrong, which would g give us a morality rather than instincts, and by that condemn us to actually do things wrong rather than just acting the way nature dictates us to. So here's my question. First off, why then did God say that if they touch the tree of knowledge of good and evil, or eat from the fruit, they will surely die. Why would God want to keep the human race ignorant about good and evil if he was supposed to give us free will from the beginning? Now, second off, it still doesn't explain the symbolism behind the first few days of Genesis, which otherwise sound pretty much like an explanation of how the world began to exist and it goes into detail on how the universe was created. Now, the, the story of Adam and Eve and the serpent definitely does sound like a symbol, but if you ask my honest, objective opinion, the first few days of creation do not. They sound like a description of how the universe came to be. So if you would please be able to provide me with some kind of explanation behind the symbolism of the first few days of creation, I would be grateful. Now, the last question is, I think that this um, explanation of the symbolism is brilliant, but I think that it just, you end up being in the same place where you started. And I'll explain why. If our conscience and our morals and the fact that we're able to do evil by choosing evil since has been a product of evolution which means that if Adam and Eve were the first hominoids which were able to make conscience conscious decisions that were not driven from instincts then what is original sin if it was a product of evolution, then you can basically say that God has directed it so that man will evolve into being able to know right from wrong, good and evil. So it's not man's original sin that actually makes us accountable for our sins, but rather God made it that way. You end up with um, the original sin being a product of evolution and not really a decision made by man. So, why does God 
condemn all of the human race to hell, um, with a few exceptions, based on the original sin, which was not our fault to begin with. So, those are my three questions. Let me repeat them. First of all, um, why did God forbid us from eating the apple, saying that if we eat from it, we will surely die? What is, what is his motive behind trying to prevent us from eating that fruit? Second question, what is the meaning behind the symbolism of the first few days of creation? And third off, if um, the knowledge of good and evil, which is the basis for um, the original sin, which is actually why all of humanity is going to hell unless they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, which the vast majority of the world don't, if it was just a product of evolution, then how can we be held accountable for it? Those are my three questions, and I'll be really glad if you answer them for me.